From the look of things, it's been a while since Augusta's last major facelift. Just venture off Broad Street, away from the Savannah River, and the dilapidation begins, first with broken bottles and mothballed real estate, all the way to an apparent onslaught by Finzi Swamp. Everywhere, buildings in disrepair, broken concrete, and weeds, and running through the middle of it all, a filthy, stagnant, mosquito-infested canal, a vestige of the city's past industrial might. But it doesn't have to be this way, says Augusta Commissioner Andy Cheek. He's proposing a landmark public works project, the kind that would change the face of the city. The idea is simple. Lengthen the existing canal on a course parallel to Broad Street and turn it into a place for recreation, like other cities have done. The 60s, when the city fathers of uh, San Antonio decided to do this and to invest the money in it, and uh, in the 90s, when uh, Oklahoma City did it, they had some very rundown areas. Uh, in fact, the, the, uh, both of them were drainage ditches, essentially, that were considered public nuisances. They have since uh, invested in these waterways, and they have in, increased their tourism and trade in those areas by millions of dollars monthly. People love water, and they create waterways for people to enjoy. They can ride uh, you know, tour boats or water taxis. Um, the stores and shops along these um, particular waterways are always crowded. This provides a place where people can, can sit and eat and enjoy the Savannah River without having to look through the levee. And we bring the Savannah River to you instead of you taking you to the Savannah River. Um, and it can all be done with existing underutilized roadways uh, for about half the cost of the Judicial Center, probably about 25 to 27 million dollars total. Under this plan, the canal would flow in a circle starting behind Davidson Fine Arts School. From there, it would cut across 12th Street and continue to Ellis Street, where it would flow parallel to Broad Street all the way to 7th. It would turn on 7th and flow past the James Brown Arena, reconnecting with the canal near 9th and Walton Way. Existing water levels would allow the canal to flow from gravity, and overflow valves would prevent flooding. The, the plan has to go before the people and the public. Uh, of course, funding is one of the issues, and, and fear. People although this has been so successful in so many other cities, uh, convincing people to remove streets and put in waterways is going to be a challenge. We have to, to show them how successful it's been and how beautiful it, it could be and actually how it could, for the first time, create urban renewal probably parallel to the expansion of the canal initially. Cheek's proposal comes at a time when the Augusta Richmond County government has been faulted for failing to complete projects under the special purpose sales tax. More than a dozen such projects, some dating back to 1996, have been stalled and will now cost taxpayers $68 million more to complete than originally projected because of increased construction costs. Given this poor track record of completing even medium-sized projects, any major infrastructure improvements on the scale of Cheek's proposal will require an entirely different level of competence on the part of city government. And there will be naysayers, of course, those who think the project is too expensive and risky. But for residents and property owners south of Broad Street, there is no other idea on the table that would improve such a broad swath of the city. And the alternative is more of the same. More broken bottles, more weeds, and a filthy canal. For the Metro Spirit, I'm Murphy Falk.